Hello, everyone. This is Ruping from Lucida, and today I'm going to show you our recent work on a top-down method, or we call it the specification-driven method, to design complex integrated、uh, photonic circuit. Our specification-driven method will be demonstrated with a、uh, uh, MZI or Maxander interferometer lattice filter example. Uh, which is a popular building block to many applications. So we will briefly explain why we've developed a design flow based on the Lucida IPKIS software to handle the design in a top-down way. And with such a design flow in place, once we have the component ready, then the circuit design task will be just a matter of specifying high-level optical system parameters. And、with the same philosophy, IPKIS Filter Toolbox AWG Designer helps designers to fast explore complex AWG or Arid Waveguide grading designs, which I'll give a very few brief、uh, in introduction as it's a, a very well-known product launched about two years ago. And then I'll summarize in about fifteen minutes. So the wavelength filters are essential elements in many integrated photonic circuits. They provide the core functionalities for WDM or、uh, wavelength division multiplexing communication systems, for sensors and biosensors, and spectroscopy. And there are many ways to construct a filter with silicon photonics, for example,、uh, using Maxander's、uh, multi-ring resonators. And arid waveguide gratings, the AWGs, and the shell gratings, and we will focus here on the Maxander interferometer lattice filter,、uh, which is basically a set of cascaded unbalanced MZIs to obtain interleaved response in the frequency domain at output ports. So, from the design aspect of such a photonics building block. Experienced designer may know very well what are the cha challenges that are in the way of fast iteration and exploration and fast time to market of the product. And the first challenge is the lack of design automation. There's very little automation compared to EDA. Most designers use multiple software that are not interoperable. Which is causing a lot of overhead in porting design information from one software to another, and will lead to human error. And there is very weak concept of PDK, which means there lacks a consolidated technology and library device information, and it's difficult to access this information. We know already that all these results in very low design efficiency. And secondly, like most today's、uh, integrated photonics design circuit or system design engineers need to start at very low level of abstraction. They need to know the physics in order to build a circuit or system from bottom up, from material CAD to optical behavior,、uh, to the device behavior, to the circuit and system behavior. So the steps towards the The design of these complex filter circuits is nowadays largely a craft that the design engineers acquires through many years of expertise. So our approach here, which is realized within the IPKI software design framework, is to enable the top-down or specification-driven method in order to spare the designers' effort in diving into all the design details. We let them. Just tune the design by high-level specifications, and the design synthesis is taken care of by software automation. So in this case, the specs we'll provide for this MZI、uh, filter design include the central wavelength,、uh, the FSR or the free spectral range, and the directional coupler power coupling ratio, which is related from the required spectral response window. And then the synthesis will give the calculated layout and the circuit simulation result. 
So let's first take a look at how the specification-driven MZI lattice P P cell works. Uh, when we instantiate an MZI lattice, all we need to provide is the FSR and the center wavelength value. Uh, IPKIS software users may know very well already the P cell concept or the parametric cell of this device. Now. The lattice filter cell is also a P-cell which user can tune the parameters, and in this case, the optical behavior parameters. And then the software evaluates and synthesizes the design for you. So these graphs just show a change of FSR or center wavelength values to automatically generate the new design with the various spectral re responses. So under the IPKIS design framework, which I'll later mention, it's actually very easy to realize such a design flow. Let's go a bit into the details of the Maxander uh, lattice filter design with the example of the MUX2 uh, design, so which splits the signals from the input by odd and even numbers of channels at the output. And the code snippet on the right is the description of this lattice P cell in IPKIS Python code. It basically consists of the properties of the P cell, some functions which calculates the layout and circuit simulation model of this MUX2 component. And this is not the full code, but we will actually have all the related layout parameters, circuit model, and model parameters stored in a single component P cell definition like this, so that user can have easy and consistent access to all the information of this component or its subcomponent. So in order to construct the layout, we need to calculate the direction couplers specifically to determine its coupling length, which determines the power coupling at each cascade. And as mentioned before, the power coupling coefficient calculations are based on FIR optical half-band filters, which can be found in the reference paper here. Another layout parameter that needs to be calculated is the delay length, which is the physical path uh, length difference between longer and shorter arm of the MZI. And we derive the values from the FSR and the physical properties of the waveguide. So with the directional couplers and the delay length calculated, we can obtain our MUX2 device instance by simply specifying the center wavelength and the FSR values. Now, if we notice earlier that we've used a parametric directional coupler compact model, which correlates coupling length with the device behavior, in IPKIS, we already have the infrastructure ready to extract such parametric analytical model. So the procedure is shown in this schematic. First, we simulate a number of direction couplers with different layout parameters. And uh, actually, it is the coupling length in this case. In the IPKIS framework, we just need to instantiate such layout from the IPKIS parametrics P cell. Then we will simulate it in a third-party physical simulator, such as numerical FDTD. We obtain the static uh, simulated model from the simulator here as S matrices. And just a side note on this procedure, IPKIS actually provide a link with numerical FDTD and other physical simulators like CST Studio and Remy software. Uh, once we create our device layout in IPKIS and the, write our simulation recipe in IPKIS, they can be communicated with Lumerical via the Python API, including the device topology, the material stacks, and their physical properties, and simulation settings. They are all automatically read from IPKIS to Lumerical. And then the simulation result, for example, as S matrix can be read back from the Merkle to, F to IPKIS. So with the simulated models, 
for different um, coupling lengths, we can now fit each of them into an analytical model, which include physical parameters like the uh, coupling length, coupling coefficients, losses, and so on. And uh, the modeling and fitting are actually all done within the IPCIS uh, Python framework, where you may use our CAFE Compact Model Simulation Engine for modeling, and can use our built-in fitting functions or other algorithms provided by the Python community. So when the static Static analytical models are done. Uh, we further interpolate them into an analytical model which correlates coupling length with the system and physical parameters. At the end, we have a parametric analytical model. So here, uh, the model extraction is done from simulation results. And in similar procedure, it can also be done using the experiment results to make more realistic models. So here um, on the left is an example of transmission spectrum by fitting simulation results of a direction coupler of a certain coupling length, uh, showing the transmission at the through and drop ports. On the right is the similar fitted model, but for a set of different coupler coupling lengths showing in uh, different colors. So above is how the directional coupler is modeled, which is done entirely in the current IPCIS software framework. The parametric model is used in the MZI lattice synthesis function as we earlier presented. And now we can make use of this high level MZI lattice P-cell block to design our circuit or system. So for example, I can start with a system design exploration by extending the single lattice filter component by another stage by connecting two identical MZR lattice blocks at the output ports of the first stage in order to obtain low crosstalk level. And we can see here the simulated spectrum results compared to the previous single stage. So such circuit design is also done in the IPCIS design framework. Since the layout and simulation model are fully parametric and hierarchical, we simply create three identical instances of the MUX2 P-cell we saw earlier, um, specify the connectivity between the components, and our layout and simulation results are generated automatically. So similarly, we can fast explore MUX4 design, which splits the channel by four. We stack another two Maxander lattice instances, and this time with two times the FSR values of the first stage. You can see from the computed layout here, the difference in delay lengths of the directional couplers, and also the simulation results of the full output of the second stage MZI lattice. So if we use the previous MUX4 as a building block and extend it further with another stage of full Maxander lattice with two times the FSR value of the previous block, then we end up with a MUX8 circuit. I won't repeat further, but I uh, just want to illustrate that there's, uh, it's extremely simple and fast to create a circuit or system design with these high-level described photonics building block. These are made possible thanks to the fully parametric and hierarchical layout and simulation model that are tightly coupled to each other. So the above, we demonstrated a specification-driven MZI lattice filter design we have done recently. And in fact, IPCIS has already developed a product two years ago, which allows users to provide high-level specifications of AWG uh, for component synthesis. So like lattice filter, AWG is also a device uh, used for multiplexing and demultiplexing. The conventional way of building such an AWG is very time consuming as the knowledge also goes from all the way at the physical level. And also constructing a DRC clean layout alone consumes a lot of time. 
So Ipkiss Filter Toolbox uses the same philosophy. We abstract the device at optical behavioral specification level, and we automate the rest of the design flow for the designers. Of course, like Ip MZI lattice design we've just seen, users also have full visibility and access to all the design details. I just put one example of the fabricated AWG measurement result here as comparison to the simulation result we've got from the software. And this one is done on the iMac Silicon Photonics Foundry, and we find a pretty good match between the results. As, a, as it's quite a complex component, AWG has many design parameters and they together take impact on certain optical uh, uh, performance parameters in different ways. And constructing the device from bottom up is almost impossible. Um, but with Filter Toolbox, users can directly provide high level parameters, including the FSR, center frequency, channel spacing, number of channels, and it will calculate a DRC clean layout and AWG behavioral model. So I won't dive into more details of the filter toolbox as this is already quite well-known product. Of course, if you are interested, I will share the contact information by the end of this presentation and you, you are very welcome to know more about this. So I'd like to reiterate the idea we have around fast prototyping complex integrated photonics components or even IP blocks. The tight link between all different design aspects is the key to realize the mentioned MZI lattice filter and AWG design flow, including component layout geometry, the physical simulation recipe, the compact model, and the circuit design information. So such link ensures we have access uh, to the information of a particular component or subcomponent, whether for its layout or for modeling information, through all the abstraction levels. And the access is all automated to guarantee there's no human error and a fast design cycle. So IPKIS software framework is exactly built from this philosophy. And many of you may have seen this flow chart that demonstrate this concept before. All the different aspects of design information of a component are stored in a single place. This is the common concept in EDA, but it was not adopted in photonics. We achieved this introduced specification-driven design method with such a framework, and more generally, we'd like to empower the integrated photonics designers to have the same capacity and efficiency as electronics designers. And lastly, I'll briefly mention what is available as software product from Lucida. Um, first, Ipkiss Flow, which is the Python-powered integrated photonics design framework that we've used to realize the MZI lattice example today. And Ipkiss EDA, which includes all the Ipkiss Flow functions. And in addition, it offers the link with Mentor's Tenor tools for an intuitive drag and drop of Ipkiss P-cell components and creating waveguides. So uh, we've also made the MZI lattice PCL available from the IPKIS EDA, which user can give the specifications of the component and instantiate it in the Tanner LEDIT GUI. The advantage here is that we can visually place and route IPKIS PCLs into a larger design in an in a intuitive way. And finally, um, the filter toolbox add-on uh, which we have the AWG design utilities for the moment. And here are the list of popular uh, integrated photonics foundries that are empowered by IPKIS uh, PDK. Um, and as you can well build your own PDK or add your custom device to a foundry PDK, it's also possible within the IPKIS framework.
So、uh, that's all that I'd like to show today.、Uh, we've seen the specification-driven method we've developed for designing complex integrated photonics components, and we've used MZI lattice filter and AWG as examples. And the high-level P cell, once it's made, then it's extremely handy for the system designers to do design explorations. And in the same time,、uh, designers with the physics knowledge can always access the detailed information and iterate the designs at whichever abstraction level, as the entire flow is automated. So thank you for your attention. It will be a great pleasure for the Lucida team to hear from you for any question.